So I had a question from a viewer who watched the uh, QECX amplifier series uh, that was having some troubles, who was having some troubles with their uh, QCX amplifier, no RF output. Uh, and he'd asked me sort of, you know, what, you know where, where do you think the problem might be? So I thought what I'd do is um, you just do a, a simple video on, uh, let's say I got to the end of the, of the QCX amplifier build and there was no output, sort of what would be kind of the debugging process there. Uh, I thought that might be of interest to people. Um, it's actually one of the reasons why I like to build stuff up module by module because it makes that sort of troubleshooting so much easier. Uh, when you get to the end and it doesn't work, it's, uh, you've got to sort of try and uh, decompose the, uh, the, um, uh, the kit into its various components and, and, and start troubleshooting from there. Um, so anyway, uh, that's what this video is going to be about, just some troubleshooting. Uh, again, my QCX works, um, the amplifier works, so uh, I'll have to maybe simulate some problems, uh, but we'll see what we'll get into with, the, with, this, uh, with this video. So let's start with some basic test setup, just to confirm that uh, we've got all the connections right, we've got the QCX set up right, we've got the amplifier set up right. And uh, you'll be familiar, if you're familiar with my series, this is the, this is the general setup here. So uh, you basically have your QCX on the, on the right here. You've got the uh, control signal coming out of the QCX and that goes into the control signal of the amplifier. So this basically provides five volts on transmit and uh, it's grounded on, uh, uh, on receive. And then if you look over, there is the um, RF output from the QCX goes to the RF input of the, uh, of the amplifier. And then finally, we have the RF output of the amplifier, and I've got that going into a thousand watt, uh, thousand watt dummy load here. So now one of the critical things that you really got to be careful with when you're, when you're actually going through and doing some troubleshooting, make sure that all the uh, terminations are 50 ohms. So don't leave the, uh, the RF output of the amplifier open. Uh, don't leave the RF output of the QCX open. Uh, you will quickly uh, damage your equipment if you don't do that. Okay, so let's just first confirm, uh, are we getting power out of the amplifier at all? And so the simplest way of doing that, uh, if you have an oscilloscope, uh, the oscilloscope's obviously the ideal tool here. You can do this with a uh, DMM if, if you don't have access to an oscilloscope. But what I've got is on the output side, so I've got this 50 ohm terminated into the, uh, into the big 1000 watt dummy load there. Uh, so we're good there. And I'm just tapping off here on the middle pin and sending the result off to the oscilloscope. So let's just have a look at that signal on the oscilloscope. Um, I'll just depress the... Uh, so there you can see we're getting uh, what looks like about a 53 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal. So now the other thing that I've done here is I've made sure that there is a, a pot on here. Let me just pan over to that pot. And one of the other things to do when you're testing is make sure that this pot here, which affects the bias voltage to the, to the FETs, is fully anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on uh, where you come from. So fully counterclockwise provides the least amount of bias voltage to the, uh, to the FETs. So that's what you want in a test configuration. You don't want to overdrive the FETs in the test configuration. So you can see there, the, uh, we're getting output on the um, amplifier, and we're drawing about 1.4 amps at 12.3 volts. Um, so that confirms that the amplifier is actually working. Um, so let's move on to now, uh, let's assume there's no, uh, there's no RF output. Where do we go next? So let's uh, first check power, and, and there's, two, uh, there's two power sources in this. There is the V+, plus, which is whatever uh, voltage you're feeding into the amplifier, and then over here you can see there's also a 5 volt regulator, which is used to set the bias uh, of the two FETs. So let's confirm first that both of those are operating correctly. Okay, so let's check the V+, plus first, and that's right here at R10. And you can see there 12.7 volts, which uh, is exactly what we're feeding. Sorry, let me get my hand out of the way so you can see where I'm probing. So that's exactly um, 12.7 volts, which is what we expect. Now let's move on to the uh, 5 volt regulator. 
Okay, so let's probe the uh, the five volts now, and then we can measure that at the upper side of the pot here. So let's depress five volts, and we're actually seeing 11.65 volts. So that's interesting. Uh, it looks like that five volt regulator might have might have failed. Let me check that again. Probing at the upper part. That's the output of the five volt regulator. Yeah, and then seeing 11 point, uh, 11 point six volts there. Um, I think that five volt regulator has failed. Uh, that's interesting. Now that five volt regulator, um, its job is to supply the uh, the bias voltage to the FET. So the amp will continue operation uh, if even if it has failed. I, I guess in this case it's failed short at around eleven volts. But uh, what I might do is I'll replace that uh, five volt regulator and see if we can get a correct reading. So I put that uh, five volt regulator on the component tester and it did test fine. Um, so uh, anyway, I replaced it uh, in any case with a new one. So you should see as I probe the top pin of the pot, now we have 4.87 volts, which is uh, exactly what we should see there. So, uh, so I had a bad five volt regulator in there. I guess that's interesting. I never picked that up. Um, Certainly uh, applying, uh, you know, it was a, it was acting basically, the old one was acting basically as a short, so certainly applying 11 volts of bias would have, uh, would have caused problems, but uh, I never, I never adjusted the, uh, the bias pot here that high. So anyway, interesting stuff. Uh, I found some, a problem without even knowing it. Anyway, let's move on to the next part. So the next thing I'd want to check is to make sure that I'm actually getting a, an RF signal from the QCX there. So it's the same deal. I'm going to probe the inner pin there with my uh, with my oscilloscope uh, and le let's put it into transmit. Now the actual output here is going to be um, uh, somewhat distorted, uh, but you can see there I'm getting a signal from the, from the QCX, uh, and uh, so that's all looking good there. So the next thing to look at is, am I getting the control signal from the QCX coming through? Um, so the easiest way to tell that is to see if that uh, red LED lights up. And it indeed does light up. Now with the control signal, all that's showing is that 5 volts is coming through the QCX. It doesn't tell you anything more than that. So it's not, it doesn't tell you whether the, any of the transmit receive circuitry is working uh, you have to go into, you know, probing that, and I'll uh, basically be doing that next. Okay, so let's move on to uh, testing the transmit receive circuitry now. So the first point that I want to test, so I've confirmed, well, let me, you can't see that, let me pan down. So I've confirmed that I'm getting 5 volts through here because this LED here, which is the red LED, is turning on. So the next thing that I want to test is, am I getting the appropriate voltage to turn this FED on? So I should be seeing around about 5 volt volts here. Let's pan over to the circuit and make sure that's the case. Okay, so this is going to be a little tricky to see, but let me see if I can pan in a little bit. So I'm probing the side of R15, which is closest to, uh, to the FET Q6. Uh, let me just pan out a little bit so you can see the... I'm going to depress the transmit. And there you can see 4.8 volts. So that's... Uh, uh, that's going to be turning that FET on. So uh, what we'll do next is we'll move over to the, the FET itself and we'll confirm that that FET is turning on and there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, so we're going to be checking to make sure this FET is correctly turned on. So what we'll do is we'll probe L10 here and what we should see is that when on transmit this FET should be turned on and L10 should be pulled close to ground. So let's go and check that. So again, this is a little tough to see, but here's L10 right here, and I'm probing the right-hand side of, uh, of L10. You can see I've got 12.4 volts. Should go close to ground when I hit the transmit. And there we go, 0 .3, 0 0.39 of a volt. So that confirms that that FET is turning off and on correctly. Okay, so let's move up to Q4 and test Q4. So basically the action of that should be uh, on transmit, this point A should be close to V plus because the P type turns on on transmit and we should see V plus here. When it's 
on receive, this point here should be close to ground. So let's move over to the circuit and test that. I'm precariously balanced here, but I've actually got my probe on this resistor R13 here. So it's one of the big uh, one watt resistors. And so that's in receive and then on transmit, 12.1 volts or V plus, and that's what we should see. Okay, so let's move on and, and test diode D1 here. So diode D1 uh, is, uh, should be forward biased on transmit because we want the signal to come through from the QCX through to the, uh, the amplifier portion. But it should be reversed bias on receive because we don't want any of the received signal, which follows this pass up, up here, coming through back through this diode here. Um, that, that could cause all sorts of nastiness in the circuit. So again, forward bias, so we should see a 0.7 volt or thereabouts uh, voltage drop on transmit. And then we should see t a roughly 12 volt um, uh, voltage here on receive. So let's go over the circuit and check that. Okay, so here we are on the uh, cathode side of, the, uh, of that diode D1 and that's 12.43 volts so uh, again we're in receive mode here so that diode is reversed bias in receive mode. So if we depress the transmit that goes down to close to ground. So let's move over to the anode side of that same uh, that same diode on transmit. So on, oh, so this is on receive. Okay, you can't see the uh, thing here. So, so this is on receive and on transmit, you should see that diode be forward biased. And there we go, we've got a 0.7 volt drop across the diode, which uh, indicates it's, it's forward biased on transmit. So that's diode D1 uh, all correct there. At this point we've confirmed um, operation of part of the transmit receive circuitry. So we haven't, uh, we haven't actually looked at this part here and confirmed that's correct. But what I'm going to move on to now is confirming that the signals getting through uh, the splitter in the amplifier. Uh, this, so this is uh, uh, transformer T1. And then we're going to check some voltages at um, the gates of both the FETs, make sure they're correct. And then we're going to finally check uh, some of the voltages at, uh, this is T3 over here. So that's the cut coming right up. First place we're going to check is uh, to make sure that we have a signal on transmit right here. Now this is the signal that goes through a pi attenuator here. Uh, so it is a, uh, an attenuated signal. Uh, I think this is a 60B attenuator here, but what we should see here is, is the RF signal, but attenuated somewhat. And then it, when we look on the other side of the splitter, we should see the phase and antiphase uh, versions of that signal. Uh, now this is, the, this is where the bias voltage gets injected, and we'll, we'll check that too. I mean, obviously, uh, this 5 volt regulator here is the is providing the bias and the bias is adjusted by adjusting that this pot here so that th this pot here is the pot that we adjusted all the way counterclockwise um, uh, in, in in one of the earlier steps so anyway we'll check the voltage here on the on the scope and then we'll check the voltages here and here uh, on the scope as well and we'll confirm that they're uh, 180 degrees out of phase with one another and then we'll move on to here and we'll confirm that we're, uh, we're at, well, we'll actually check the voltage that we're getting 5 volts here uh, but anyway that's coming up next okay so here's the test set up here and I'm kind of being super paranoid not to uh, accidentally touch the wrong thing but it's this this is the transformer T1 here and the input side is the hole furthest back so this side is all grounded here and then the first hole to the right hand side is the input and then the next two uh, are the output so that's where I've got the probe let's pan up on the oscilloscope and what we should see is when we depress the key we should see a signal there and there it is now it's a bit distorted 
but uh, there's that signal on the input to transform a T1. So now let's move on to the output side. Okay, so now I'm starting to require three arms here. So what I'm doing now is I'm probing the gates of the FET. So the FETs are underneath the board here, attached to the heat sink. So the gate, this is the gate of FET 1, and this, the bottom one, is the gate of FET 2. So they're kind of swapped around. So I've got the oscilloscope hooked up to both the gates there, and as I depress transmit, you should see that phase and antiphase signal there at the gates of those two FETs. And that's at a peak to peak of about 13 volts. Uh, so that's exactly what we should be seeing at the gate of those two FETs. Now, obviously, if you don't see anything there at all, then that would indicate you've got some problem likely with transformer T1. Um, either you haven't soldered the, uh, the, the, either you haven't soldered the windings in correctly, uh, it would be pretty tricky to wind it the wrong way, but it's certainly possible that you haven't scraped the enamel off the, off the transformer correctly. Um, now, if you see that uh, some other uh, kind of weird signal, it could be that you've got the, uh, the windings correct, it connected incorrectly. So in other words, you don't have the primaries and the secondar secondaries where they should be. But getting those two signals at the gates antiphase uh, and again, uh, now this is, uh, th this is a fairly low input voltage, but at an input voltage of around about 13 volts peak to peak is, is kind of what you should be seeing at the gates of those, uh, of those uh, power fets. So what we'll move on to next is uh, towards the output of uh, uh, transformer, let's say, we'll, we'll look at the input of transformer T3 and uh, we'll see what we see there and then we'll have a look at the output of transformer T3 uh, and then we'll uh, the final step would be to uh, to go through the uh, the other side of the low pass filter and confirm we've got an output there but anyway that's coming right up okay so now we move on to looking at the uh, signals that uh, coming from the core of the amplifier here so we're going to start with looking at the uh, drains of the of both these FETs and uh, seeing what that signal looks like then we'll look at the input to the final uh, transformer and the output on the final transformer and see what those signals look like. Um, now, kind of a, a note here, all of these signals are gonna be very rich in harmonics. They're not gonna be that sort of perfect sine wave. Uh, as the signal passes through the low pass filter, all of those harmonics should be filtered out. So we'll, we'll look at the, the uh, result at the end of the low pass filter right at the end here. Uh, but for the moment, let's uh, sample at the core of the uh, amplifier. Okay, so let's uh, sample the uh, drains of those two FETs. Actually, we'll just do one of the FETs because uh, likely they're going to be symmetrical. Although if you were truly troubleshooting, you'd, uh, you'd want to check both of the FETs. So the drain is the middle connector here, and I, I've got to be super careful not to short this out, so bear with me. Uh, that looks pretty good. So I've got that uh, on the middle pin of the FET there. Let's uh, pan up to the oscilloscope and uh, zoom in a bit so you can see See what's going on there. I'll press. I'll depress transmit, and then you can see there's that. Uh, there's the signal at the drain. Now note a couple of things. So obviously there's all that. Note all that uh, sort of harmonic stuff that's going on in the signal. Uh, but certainly what you should be seeing is that the signal's amplified. So if you'll recall, we had a peak to peak coming in of around of a, 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 about 13 volts, and on the output we have a peak to peak around 28 volts. So that's uh, what the drains uh, will look like. What we'll move on to next is the input to that uh, final transformer. Okay, so let, now let's probe the, uh, the input to that, uh, to that uh, final transformer there. Bear with me, I'm just gonna hook up the ground connection. So I gotta be super careful again not to create a short situation. But that's probing right there. No oh, lordy. And let's pan up to the oscilloscope so we can see exactly what the signal looks like and really should be very similar to the signal that we saw before from the uh, the source of the uh, sorry the drain of those fats so there it is peak to peak of around about 28 volts now obviously that that value is going to vary depending on the input voltage to the amplifier so I'm running at about uh, the same voltage from before which was around about 12.7 uh, volts input to the trans to the uh, amplifier and I'm getting about 1.8 uh, 
Oh, why don't I show you that uh, down here? So here's the uh, power supply here. 1.8 amps at uh, 12.7 volts. So now what we'll do is we'll, uh, po uh, we'll look at the output of the transformer. And on the output side, we should be getting closer to what, uh, to what the signal looks like. So that's coming up right next. The output of that transformer is right here. Uh, the other side is actually grounded. So it's symmetrical on the right-hand side of this transform, uh, transformer here, but it, it is grounded on the, on the left side here. So, so I've got it probing the output. Let's pan up to the oscilloscope and uh, see that again. And there's that signal. You can see we're now way up at 71.6 volts peak to peak. So 28 volts peak to peak prior to the transformer. And then as we expect, because we've got a, a, a windings difference across the transformer, we've got a 71.6 volt, 71 volt peak to peak signal. And you can see a lot of, the, uh, a lot of that harmonic stuff on the signal has, has dissipated as well. As well. Once we get through the uh, low pass filter, we should see all of that uh, harmonic stuff removed. So we've confirmed that this diode is correctly forward biased uh, in, in, in a previous section. But what I'll do first is I'll probe after the low pass filter, uh, whichever is more convenient, either this side or this side of that, uh, of that capacitor. Uh, and, let, and let's have, this, have a look at the signal immediately after the low pass filter. Okay, so here we are uh, at the other side of the low pass filter and the most convenient location, well it depends on your kit here, this is a 40 meter kit, so uh, the, the most convenient location is this unpopulated uh, capacitor here. So, uh, so that's what I'll be probing, bear with me, I've got to get it on the right spot. So. Uh, this is hard to do behind the camera, my apologies. So let, let's, uh, I think I've got it on the right spot now. Let me pan up onto the oscilloscope. And so this is right after the low pass filter. And you can see now that the signal is looking a lot more like that nice sine wave that, uh, that we're expecting. Now it's not perfect. You can see it's, uh, it's a little squared off on the, on the bottom end there. Um, so it's not a perfect sine wave. There's still some harmonic content in there. Uh, but obviously we have a much better signal than, uh, uh, than we had in the, in the core of the amplifier. So that's kind of the full pathway uh, all the way through up until just before. Let me just pan over to the, to the schematic again so you can see that for yourself. So where we were probing right just then was right here. Um, and so that's just after the low pass filter but before this receive transmit diode. So it's, it's of course possible that um, you can get a signal here, uh, but for some reason this diode has, uh, has gone open or what, what have you. So definitely probing here uh, would, uh, you know, would be a good troubleshooting spot. Um, and then once you've probed here and confirmed a signal, obviously if you probe after here and you don't see a signal, then this diode is your number one suspect. Okay, so this is the final uh, step in the troubleshooting, and, and this is to confirm the operation of this, uh, this lower um, transmit-receive uh, switching here. So that basically what, what, what happens is um, these two diodes on receive are forward biased, so we, you will get a signal passing through here, uh, and they're reverse biased on, on transmit, and, and, and the purpose of which is to present, is to prevent uh, amplified signals from making their way back through uh, and being presented at the input of the amplifier on transmit. So obviously that would create, so create oscillations uh, and obviously they've got to be low impedance on a receive because this is the actual path through which the received signals uh, uh, get presented. And uh, th this is one of the things I mentioned in the original video. It's kind of an ingenious little setup that, that, that Hans has got here but basically he's got a voltage doubler here which ensures that on transmit, there, there is going to be double the voltage here that any uh, sort of um, that will appear at either here or here. Uh, but here's this sort of th these caps and these diode form the voltage doubler, which effectively doubles the the uh, the output of sing signal, uh, does some rectification and presents it right here. So we can confirm that. We'll look at point F. We'll confirm that on transmit we should see approximately double the uh, uh, 
um, uh, the, the transmitted the transmitted voltage right here. So let's go and do that right now. Okay, so this is the junction of D3 and D5. Um, and, and just a quick correction, uh, we're not going to see the double of the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. We're going to see the double of the amplitude, which is half the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. So half the amplitude, half the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is 35 volts, and then double that should be around about 70 volts is what we should see right here between these two diodes. And let's do, let's press that. So we got around about 70 volts, which, uh, which is exactly what we should see. Um, so what I'll move on to next is uh, just probing around uh, some of the remainder of that transmit receive circuitry. Because obviously if you're not seeing that voltage there, or uh, uh, you, know, you have some other problem, it could be to do with the way, the, the, the way that part of the circuit is switching off and on. So we'll do that next. So let's just walk through the remainder of this. So on receive, these two diodes should both be forward biased to allow the signal to pass through them. Uh, so we should see uh, this about 0.7 of a volt above ground. We should see this about 0.7 of a volt above ground. And this should be close to ground. And, and all that is on receive. So let's move over to the circuit and check that now. Okay, so uh, let's probe those diodes. And uh, so this guy, so the center should be grounded on receive or close to ground. And there it is, 0.07 of a volt. And then if we probe either side of the, these two diodes here, the anodes, there we go, 0.7 of a 5, 5 on the top diode, and we should get the same on the bottom diode. There we go, 0.77. So that confirms the diodes are correctly bias on receive. So let's move further back into the circuit if we don't see that, uh, if we see something different on either the anode and the cathode or the cathode side of the diodes, that could mean something else in the receive circuitry is wrong. So let's uh, move further back in the receive circuitry and test some voltages there. Okay, so just moving back in the, uh, in the uh, uh, transmit receive switching circuitry here. So on receive, this is close to ground and on receive, this FET should be enabled. So if you're not seeing this close to ground, then it could mean there's something wrong with this FET or it's not being, uh, or, or we're not seeing the, the proper voltage at the, uh, at the gate of the FET. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna probe the gate of that FET and what we should see is around about five volts on receive and we should see it uh, around about zero volts on, uh, on transmit. So let's move over to the circuit and check that out. Okay, so I'm going to probe the gate of that uh, FET, and that FET is Q3. So the gate is the leftmost pin. So let's uh, carefully probe that. Right, there we go. So 6.9 volts, and this is again on receive. 6.9 volts, let's hit transmit. And that goes down to pretty much close to ground. So you can see there it's turned on on receive and it's turned off on transmit. So let's keep going through the circuit. So we're pretty much done here now with the, with the checking. Um, if we've got the correct voltage here, we've already checked this, um, uh, we've already checked this line here. This is the control line from the QCX and that gets five volts on transmit and zero volt, volts on receive. So what that means is if this is right, then that means this FET's working also. Uh, and we don't, we don't really have to check it. Now you could have a connection here problem here where uh, you know, you've got, you, you don't have this soldered in correctly and V plus isn't coming down to here. So you could potentially have that, but we've kind of already confirmed at this point that uh, the gate voltage on Q3 is correct. So that pretty much wraps up uh, all I had planned to walk through in this, uh, uh, in this series. What I will do is I've, I've created a diagram with all the various test points on it uh, and I will sort of freeze the freeze the camera here for a bit while you while you uh, so you can freeze your freeze your screen. So there's the um, this is from the QRP Labs uh, kit itself. Let me just get that into into focus. So the pink dots are all the test points. I, I've missed a few here. There's here's the output signal of the um, uh, of the transformer and then here down here is where I was probing for the uh, at the output of the low pass filter uh, but other than that I've pretty much captured all the uh, all the all the important points on here so 
Anyway, I hope this uh, I hope this is helpful. Um, again, that viewer that that raised the problem. Um, I, uh, I hope this, uh, this, this video series was helpful uh, for you. Um, you know, let me know in the, in the comments uh, if, you, you know, if you were successful or, or, or otherwise. I'd, I'd be really interested to find out, particularly uh, if, this, uh, if this video helped your, your troubleshooting. Anyway, that's all for now.